We're now talking with Charlie Hillis, who is Vice President, Sales and Marketing, Commercial Aviation, North America for Embraer. Thank you for speaking to me this evening. My pleasure. Nice to be here. And perhaps we could start off by giving the audience the vision from Embraer of the yes, market. Yes. Um, I think to talk about the regionals, uh, specifically, you, you've got to set the table a little bit by talking about the, the market in five years from now. And uh, in our opinion, uh, the uh, upgaging that's currently in progress will continue. Um, it'll still be a vital uh, piece of the regional, uh, sorry, of the national transportation system, the regional market. The, um, uh, probably the, the pilot shortage will be mitigated by then. We think fuel will be up. We think uh, some smaller communities will continue to lose service. Uh, and there probably will be a few less regionals than there are today. So that's, that's the basic uh, parameters of uh, where we think the market will be in five years from now. So for the regionals themselves, right, uh, and when I spoke earlier about uh, upgaging, I'm talking 50 to 70 to 76 to 80. So when I say 80, that implies scope change. Right. right? Um, specifically around 2019, and it won't be the traditional drivers of uh, bankruptcies and mergers, right? We think it'll be more along the lines of uh, higher fuel prices that will drive the scope change because uh, when fuel becomes the major decision factor, it drives change, and change in this case will be scope. Uh, when 1% fuel burn savings is important, when you look at an E2 airplane, an Embraer E2 airplane that comes with 16 to 23%, uh, it's just too compelling to pass by. So we think that will, uh, that will, the higher fuel prices will drive the scope, and the E2 will be ready at that time to step in and take advantage of that. It's interesting that it occurs to me that if you have a pilot shortage, that in itself should drive upgaging. Because True. you've got fewer pilots to move a, a growing amount of traffic. True. Does that make sense? It does. It does. Uh, there, will, there will always be a market for 50-seaters, we think. Very small, though, as we go forward. So a lot more will come out of this, uh, the system. And as I said, 70, 76, and hopefully 80. Uh, but again, that should occur around 2019. What do you think? Do you think you see scope creeping up from its current limitation? Well, that's what we're hoping for. Uh, and not a huge step, a small step, really. It's uh, 100,000 pounds from 86,000, and uh, it's from 76 seats to 80 seats. So, and hopefully, on top of that, maybe the number of uh, airplanes that you can fly under scope. Typically, it's tied to the narrow body fleet. Um, we hope that increases a little bit uh, because a small increase in the ratio uh, implies a much larger number of airplanes. So, you know, if you're 60% of the narrow body fleet, you can fly as uh, 76 seaters and 70 seaters, anything above 50. If that went up to 70 or 75, it'd be huge for us. The North American market, or the United States market, really, with, with the scope limitation, continues to be, represent probably two-thirds of the regional jets in the world. And it's kind of hard, I guess, in your business trying to build something that's limited by two-thirds of the market. Um, outside the U.S., you don't have the scope, scope limitation. Correct. And so there's a, there's a preponderance of moving to bigger airplanes anyway, right? Right, right. But uh, we realize that the North American market uh, pretty much drives our 76-seat uh, sales. Uh, that's not a problem for us, again, because we think we'll be doing a lot of replacement in the future, and we think scope will change uh, and allow us to include the E2. And if scope doesn't move, you just keep building the e EV? Keep, keep building the best-in-class airplane. We're known for continually investing in the product, so there'll be changes between now and five years from now. So it'll be even better than it is today. But if there's a chance to take advantage of this huge fuel burn improvement, I do see the airlines taking it. You know, 
trading whatever they have to trade to make it happen. But it will happen. I think it'll happen around the time it's available. It's so. interesting that, that you, you think that the fr price of fuel goes up. When do you see that happening? I think it'll be down for another year or two and then steadily go up from there. I mean, it's already come back, I think, 40% from its low. So it's already inching back up. Uh, everybody seems to think it'll stabilize around $70, $80, which is still a driver right. in the industry, right? So, so if we look outside of the United States and we look worldwide at the market below 100 seats, is there room for four players, Sukhoi getting involved, Mitsubishi getting involved, of course, Embraer and Bombardier um, are the small duopoly, and of course all the airlines have told me they want to have at least two players. How do you see that playing out? I think three is the right number. Um, as long as we continue getting our 80% share of the market, the other two guys can fight over the 20. But uh, we've got a great product and we've got a great follow-on product. So I don't think uh, for Embraer uh, we're going to have a lot of competition. We'll have competition, but when you have the best product, uh, most of the airlines don't want to compete with the second or third best. Thank you. Sure.